Welcome to Moore Intelligence. I'm Roland Main, and I'm here with Mark Fagan, who leads Moore's Manufacturing and Distribution Group. We're discussing the big pivot that firms are making to reshape their business models and reconfigure their supply chains. So, Mark, why is there a need for the big pivot? Well, this need has been developing, Roland. The fourth industrial revolution, it's been advancing for several years now. It's driven primarily by technology and it's created a more advanced relationship between the supplier and the, and the ultimate consumer. COVID really has been an accelerator of 4.0 beyond just the effects of Amazon and eBay. In our, um, in our Citroen Cooperman 2020 M&D survey, 44% of respondents were preparing to make a big pivot. That survey was of 200 middle market companies in the US, which were either manufacturers and or distributors, but this issue really is worldwide. So what are companies doing to actually make this pivot? So Roland, our survey pointed to three areas that they were responding to. The first was increased online sales. That's requiring a lot of these companies to change the way they approach selling and change their marketing focus to really emphasize these online sales, including cleaning up their websites, including changing customer service, maybe um, having 24 hour customer service, open on Saturdays and so forth. The other is the change in the product demands as a whole. With COVID, there was a shift in what consumers were buying and not only a shift in what they were buying, but how it was being delivered. And this all really created disruption for both manufacturing companies and distributors. And the last was the supply chain disruptions that were caused with COVID. And it was, it was twofold. It was the amount of time to get from source to consumer and also the cost from getting from source to consumer. Many companies realized with COVID that they had a real risk, a business risk with supply chain concentration. That is causing companies to reevaluate, to look at going from one source of, pro of product sourcing into multiple, whether it be China and Vietnam, China and Brazil, China and, another, and in other countries, or possibly putting it in the United States. Right now, I've got a customer, a client of mine, who is looking to go from being a distributor to partnering with their manufacturers and opening up a manufacturing plant either in Mexico or Brazil or even Texas to be closer to the consumer. So what does this mean then at a practical level? Well, Roland, a little bit of what I talked about previously was managing risk. Interesting part of the survey said 50% of our respondents said they were not confident with their ability to manage crisis. And COVID was a big wake up call for them. We found that companies that did well and really did the best at COVID during that COVID period had, had some very similar characteristics. One, they really understood their business and what their customer wanted. They had committed and talented leadership at the highest level. They had strong e-commerce already in place and had a strong uh, technology platform that could pivot very quickly when they wanted to change uh, customer, uh, customers' focus to certain products. And they were able to make decisions quickly and execute on those decisions. Those customers were really the ones that even if they were hit hard in, in some of their core product offerings, were able to make decisions, pivot, shift to other products, get the website to be communicating the message they wanted to, to, to their customers and push their product out, quality product, different product uh, in a timely manner. So um, the ones that were less organized and really hadn't, hadn't gotten to best practices before COVID struggled, struggled much more and were, were slower in their response to 
the, the changes that happened, you know, during the, the last 12 months. You say customer habits are changing. What implications does that have for manufacturers and distributors? It's got massive implications. The biggest, obviously, is lack of sustainability. Will, will these companies be able to survive if they don't adopt to their customer needs? Customer habits are changing. They've already changed over the past 12 months. Manufacturers and distributors need to understand what the consumers want, whether it's free delivery, more product options, consumer-focused website, or being able to ask a question at 10 o'clock at night at their customer service department. They've got to be able to understand how to do that in a profitable manner. Companies really need to look at the products they're selling and understand which ones they should invest their resources in and time in, and which ones maybe just give up to the Amazons of the world or the Ebays and focus on the ones that really are best for their business model. One of the things our survey indicates, and I think it holds true, especially over the next five years, is a very direct correlation between best in class technology and financial success. So that's gonna be a critical part of the pivot that we've been talking about is to be able to continue to invest capital, to keep up with technology, to understand your consumers using technology and then capitalize on that. You say many companies are now investing in technology. What's that technology doing for them? Well, better data means better focus. And the thing is, the information is in their systems. They just have to be able to get that information out, analyze it, and understand what it means. There's a great example of when Starbucks teamed up with the Weather Channel because Starbucks was having a tough time getting cups to all of their stores in a efficient and timely manner, depending on whether customers wanted hot beverages or cold beverages. So the Weather Channel was able to do a study and determine that at 65 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when the switch happened. So if it went above 65 degrees, the customers wanted iced coffee. Below 65 degrees, they wanted hot coffee. That enabled Starbucks to understand and predict where and when the cold coffee was gonna be needed and the hot coffee. So that saved them millions of dollars after that study was done. It's really a way to understand and a good example of drilling down into the consumer habits. It, it helps a company manage so many things much more efficiently. Obviously the, the big pivot is gonna require big investment. How are companies funding that? You know, it's tough, especially for the middle market companies. They don't have the, the wherewithal and the ability to make mistakes that the larger companies do. Bank lending is, is tough for projects like these because they really want to have something to securitize it. You know, that's where private equity could be an answer for companies that are looking to get some capital to make really the next big move for their company and also expertise. Because one thing about private equity, they have a lot of sources and a lot of places to pull very smart, experienced entrepreneurs who have been through this before. So that could be a really good place for companies to partner with and to try to get through the next phase of this COVID, um, post-COVID era, industrial revolution 4.0 and so forth, because there's a lot going on over the next five years in how technology is changing, how we deliver to our consumers, how disintermediation is creating a very short um, span from source to consumer and how data analytics is really becoming the driving force of consumer behavior. So those are a lot of things that a, you know, middle market companies have to tackle over the next five to plus years. So in summary, um, what's the most important thing companies need to think about uh, when they're making that big pivot? Well, success, 
success in making that pivot because you can make a decision to do it, but to implement is not easy. And like we talked about, it could be very expensive to learn on the fly. So there's a few things that I've seen make, make it successful, pivots like these. It's one, perform the right kind of due diligence before you start. Business pivots should be based on data and facts, not on emotion and opinion. A, a good recipe for success will be to include persons outside the organization as well as inside the organization who think strategically and maybe don't have something in the game that's going to benefit them personally. And also it's, a, it's imperative for the people on that team to be able to disagree with the CEO. So that's, so that's one big important factor. The next is collaborate with partners. And this is where we're talking a little bit about PE before. Changing your operating model in this environment is likely gonna involve collaboration with your customers, with your suppliers, and people in the middle as you try to figure out how to innovate your products and services. Assigning cross-functional teams that work closely together to accomplish this goal is going to be very important and it's going to be critical to your success. And then probably the last is the decision you make is never going to end. This implementation is going to evolve as it goes. It's going to, it's going to include multiple smaller tactical and strategic decisions. Organizations that build a strong capability within them and to be able to make mistakes, learn from it, and then keep pushing forward and applying this commitment and the knowledge that they have gotten to is gonna be, is gonna be really key for their success. It's really about sweat and it's about keeping to your focus, keeping to your commitment, learning from your mistakes, and then just moving forward to the finish line. So those are, those are three things that are really important for this. Well, Mark Fagan, thanks very much for your insight. Oh, thank you, Roland, and it was a pleasure doing this with you.